Okay, good. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody, and welcome to the to the press briefing. Um, uh, it's a hybrid briefing, so we also have some probably some people also joining us online uh, before the Security Council elections tomorrow. Uh, we will today uh, present the way how we got to this point, so on the eve of the vote uh, tomorrow, uh, and also give you ob obviously an opportunity also to ask questions. So, uh, so basically, it's the background on our candidature for the UN Security Council, which we presented, first of all, by our Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Foreign and European Affairs, Tanya Fayon. We also have here a Slovenian permanent representative, Ambassador Bostian Malover, here on Minister's right. And then on the other side is our head of the task force for the Security Council, Matej Marn. So I'll ask first the minister to give us an outline to present our candidature and the way forward. Thank you very much, Dragan. Uh, good afternoon to um, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here in um, New York, but also it's a pleasure to speak with the journalists and the representatives of the media. Um, as you know, tomorrow the UN General Assembly will vote on the next five non-permanent seats on the UN Security Council. And to use a very sports jargon, we are on the home straight. Slovenia is one of the two candidates for one seat in the Eastern European group. And uh, let me start by saying and admitting at the same time that our campaign was rather short. And we campaigned under the slogan, building trust, securing future. And I'm proud that Slovenia led a fair, a very positive campaign, emphasizing our strengths and above all our very sincere commitment to addressing joint global challenges jointly with all UN members. And uh, we have indeed done our utmost to present Slovenia as a credible partner candidate for the UN Security Council to as many countries as possible. And our main message in discussions with almost all UN members was that Slovenia will act as a unifying force at the UN Security Council. And with tensions and divisions that we all face today between the major players in the international community, many countries, especially the smaller ones which make up the majority of the UN membership, want to connect with trusted partners. And partners who do not look at their challenges through the prism of self-interest, and from a position of superiority, but with respect and with a willingness to listen and seek together solutions. And as we have explained to our interlocutors, Slovenia is a very good listener. Also, we hear what our interlocutors have to say, and we are sincerely committed to follow through on our promises. We are ready to continue working with them on climate change, security implications, which coupled with the food and energy crisis are hitting the most vulnerable the hardest today. And climate change and its impact on security, climate change together with the food and energy crisis affects the most vulnerable. So without adequate development today in these countries, it will be difficult to maintain a secure and stable environment. Against this background, we underline the importance of the preventive capacity of the Security Council, which needs to strengthen its role as a conflict preventer, not just as a conflict manager. So to be honest, we entered the bid for the UN Security membership due to our firm conviction that all UN members can benefit from our own experience. Slovenia has a lot to offer as a humble, sincere, and knowledgeable interlocutor. In particular, that is important at the times of deep global divisions and uncertainties. Our history, Slovenia's history, our past and present experience makes us understand developments in many countries in the world. We are a small country with no historical burdens, with a historical memory of constructive cooperation with many parts of the world as a part of former Yugoslavia, a member of the non-aligned movement, 
but with experience of successful political and economic transition. We are also very proud of our lasting commitment to multilateralism and the international law. And we have previous experience from the UN Security Council. And I would also like to underline that uh, Slovenia is firmly on the side of UN Charter and the rules-based international order. At the same time, we recognize the vast gaps in the international law that should be filled due to emerging challenges like disinformation. We also acknowledge the illogical fact that two-thirds of the UN Security Council is consumed by African issues without Africa. And therefore, the reform of the UN Security Council is needed. So the campaign itself represents a rewarding path for our country and our diplomacy. And in retrospect and in summary, I can say that Slovenian diplomacy has shown what it's capable of and what it can do. We have brought a new dynamism to our own foreign policy engagement and established or strengthened dialogue with a number of countries with which we had little or even no contact before our candidacy. In other words, we have reconnected Slovenian diplomacy to the world. And I'm committed to maintaining these contacts, whatever the outcome of tomorrow's elections. And uh, how did we go about all this? As I said, we had less than a year. So we decided to attend as many multilateral events as possible and to meet with representatives of countries not covered by Slovenian embassies or too far away to travel in the limited time we had. In New York alone, this is my fifth time in a few months. In the last year, I attended the UN General Assembly last September and the UN Water Conference last year. I met permanent representative of most UN member states. And what is the result? We are proud to say, I am proud to say, that high officials of the Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs have met with representatives of almost all UN member states, which is um, quite an effort for our diplomacy. And 150 of these meetings I held myself in the last year. So either is official bilateral visits to the country or as bilateral meetings on the margins of various conferences, including some here at the UN, or for example in Doha recently, I traveled extensively to hear directly from our partners. And I can say it was a great privilege because to have an opportunity to discuss with all different parts of the world nowadays, it not only enriches you, but gives you the perspective what we are obliged to do. And during the UN General Assembly last September, we broke a national record for the number of meetings. In that September week, I participated or attended around 45 bilateral meetings, events, and conferences. So it's not about the numbers, and it's not about um, really how many contacts you can do, but it's a message that it's important to me that we are capable of listening and also hearing to each other. And we are capable of engaging in dialogue and understanding today all parts of the world, which is in time that is most needed. So the paramount work has been done by also our mission in the UN. They have been engaged both with member states and on topics that we advocate for in the UN. And also many contacts were possible thanks to my two deputy ministers, five special envoys for the Security Council, of course to the diplomats from our diplomatic missions and also consular posts around the world. And to sum up, we are confident that tomorrow all will go well for Slovenia. In any case, there will be no regrets for us because we have not only done everything we could, because we have presented Slovenia as a responsible member of the international community, perfectly fit to assume the position in UN Security Council. Thank you um, for this, my opening remarks, and I am available for the questions. Yes, thank you. Okay, we'll start there. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, sure. Uh, thank you so much, uh, um, uh, Madam Minister, uh, on behalf of the United Nations Correspondent Association for this press conference, and uh, good luck for tomorrow. Uh, Valeria Robeco from ANSA News West Service. Uh, so my question is, uh, uh, you said you are confident, so can you give us like a little bit more details? Uh, what are your expectations? I'm sure you get like uh, a lot of support from uh, uh, you know, the European countries uh, giving uh, which is your opponent. Uh, so, like, if you can elaborate a little bit of what are your expectations. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your question. You know, um, at our work, it's always um, important that we bring um, optimism and that we are confident. But confident we are also for the reason that I know we did everything we could. But as I said before, um, in the last few months, I had a great privilege myself and an experience that I was talking to so many partners in the world, many even new ones where we didn't have contacts or very little contacts. And from these partners today, I'm getting uh, positive messages. Um, that means that, you know, that we really engage in trying to understand what is at stake today. I know that tomorrow is only a beginning of a very um, challenging path if we are elected, but we are ready. We know what is um, on the agenda. We know how to approach, and honestly, I sincerely believe that Slovenia, with our own historic experience, can truly build bridges and confidence that is very much at stake. So we are sincere in this endeavor to work hard, and we are in sincere to really have dialogue with everyone, because I think this is very important today. Why we are positive? Signals are good, and maybe by nature we like to be positive and Optimism is something people need today. Thank you. We'll just go actually. Everybody has asked for the first, then I'll go to the second row. But let's, let's go to you next. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's good that I was journalist myself. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Minister. Edith Lettera from the Associated Press. Um, Slovenia came into this campaign late to challenge Belarus, and at least there are some organizations that are very happy that there's one competitive race this year. Um, can you tell us why you decided to uh, take up this challenge against uh, Belarus, and um, how important the war in Ukraine was in that thinking. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. I will start by saying, first, it's never too late. Um, and I don't regret because, um, as I said before, today I feel that the world is changing tremendously fast. And uh, we need each other even more than maybe ever before. And it was uh, for us a big opportunity to also open. We are a small country. We are very much um, in a way dependent from multilateralism, from international law, from the rule of law, from the dialogue. And it was, uh, as I see it today, a very important contribution to put also Slovenia in the world map and to make partners understand that we want peace and stability. And this is the mission of this organization. And it's at stake, a lot is at stake today, with saying that the world is changing very fast. So I wouldn't, certainly that the war in Ukraine that lasts more than a year, in a way with our struggle to preserve peace and stability and ensure um, safety in our region, in a way drifted us apart from the rest of the world, but it's important that we are connected that we embrace a global south, that we take care of what is going on in Africa, that we really are committed to, to Asia, to all parts of the world. Being a small country, you have a different perspective. And I'm just proud to say that in a year time, 
we in a way put our Slovenian diplomacy as maybe, I wouldn't say a game changer for us, but an important player for us in the region and also credible partners to other countries in the UN. Thank you, Minister, for the briefing. Uh, my name's Michelle Nichols. I'm with Reuters here at the UN. Um, I'll be a little more blunt than my colleague Edie. Um, Slovenia entered the race after the government crackdown on protests in Belarus. Then since then, the war has started in Ukraine in which Belarus is helping Russia. How much of a role did the crackdown on the protests play in Slovenia's decision to enter this race? And obviously since then there's been the war. Um, mm -hmm. Has that... Do you feel at all that this has turned this vote into a kind of proxy vote on Russia? Um, I think there is no simple and or a single answer to that. It's a, um, but I think that we are all on the same side thinking about that we want to see peace and stability. If we can, as Slovenia, contribute to that, no matter whether that is a war in Ukraine, which is of course, the safety issue for our region, thinking that we have the Western Balkans and the experience also from the bloody wars 30 years ago, for us is therefore extremely important that we can be player on the world stage to preserve peace and stability. No matter whether it's war in Ukraine, but of course it's affecting us directly and the whole world has changed tremendously after that, but also um, today in a globalized world, whatever is happening around the globe is affecting us. So that is why I just can repeat once again, I am glad and it's a privilege for our country to stand with this candidacy and to present Slovenia as a, I would say, um, very ambitious and also self-confident that we can really build trust and secure our future with being committed to multilateralism and working together. I wouldn't search deeper in reasons, but today we stand as Slovenia very proud on this path and we will be very self-confident in UN Security Council that we will be taking decisions that will respect why this is the institution is made for. Thanks, James. James Bayes from Al Jazeera. Um, First, before I ask my question, and I'd say this to any um, a country that's joining the council, if, if you do get elected, um, please engage with the press because we find lots of, uh, lots of council members <laughs> who ignore us. Uh, so if you are elected, we would like you to engage with us, please. You are on, on, you are on the safe side as I was a journalist correspondent. <laughs> um, so in, in your opening statement, you finished it with the words that Slovenia is perfectly fit for the UN Security Council. Let me turn the question round. Would Belarus be fit to be on the UN Security Council? And during your battles and, and negotiations and talks with all these different countries, all the impressive lists of people you've spoken to, have you been in touch with the Belarusian opposition and Svetlana Tishinovskaya? Um, first of all, we were running a positive campaign. That means that we were promoting Slovenia and our goals, what we want to achieve. So, frankly, I don't want to judge others. Everyone has a sovereign right to be uh, a member. And in the Eastern group, if I remember well, there has often been some sort of a competition. It's not for the first time. And I think it's even healthy sometimes because different countries can pers um, present different perspectives, different visions, and everyone can judge. Um, since I am in politics for many years, and I was um, before in different capacity, I had a chance to meet Svetlana also in my previous capacity. I know her well as many others. And um, I always like to listen. I have no closed door policy. I like to speak with people and I like to listen to understand. So that's my answer to your question. And uh, count on me at least if, if I'm here that I have a best understanding for the media. Okay, next. Thank you so much. My name is Afrim Kosaifi from Arab News Daily. If I could ask you a more specific questions about uh, the Arab files in the, at the UN Security Council, there's also many, many files from Yemen, Libya, Palestine, 
Syria, um, and there hasn't been any, there's been very little progress on them throughout the years, some of them completely, complete stalemate. Um, what do you think the Slovenia experience can bring to these mm. files and through all, all your meetings? Um, how do you view these um, issues and is there anything you can bring to the table that you think could create some movement? Um, yes, I had a chance to speak um, also with many ministers or representatives from the uh, Middle East and discussing the situation with um, Palestine, Israel, with what we can bring with many partners actually I discussed. Mostly I listened what are the expectations and how we can best um, uh, try to be um, of help. So we established contacts, we put everything on the table. We had recently also in Ljubljana quite some representatives um, um, and a discussion with them. So I take very seriously what is happening and how we can approach it. I cannot give now solutions to the answers, but I can just say that we are very much engaged um, with all the countries and um, even intensifying our presence and the dialogue. So definitely what is... Um, to be done is that um, it's with Middle East certainly we will have a, a big effort to, to preserve what is happening there and I am in contact with all the ministers there. Thank you. Please. Sidia Lavaren, Africa Confidential. <coughs> My question is very simple. Do you really think that the UN is still relevant? Do you really think that the Security Council is relevant, knowing that everything is blocked, and that the 10 non-permanent members have little to do with decision making? So what do you expect mm -hmm. by being part of it? Yes, I strongly believe that UN is relevant. That doesn't mean that I strongly believe it's efficient. This is different, but I strongly believe it's relevant because what is left if we don't have organizations such as UN preserving peace stability with um, declarations, with uh, humanitarian and international law, with the rules, respect of territorial sovereignty, integrity, internationally recognized borders, so name so many issues that after this year of experience that I went through, I even believe it more. So it is relevant, but we have to improve it. We have to improve efficiency, which will be a very, very challenging task that I'm aware as maybe even you are more aware, but um, we are ready to do so. We are ready to engage with partners at the table and um, continue working hard because truly, especially from the perspective of small countries, what is then left if the rules are not respected? Okay, I've seen two more hands, so we'll go first there and then to you in the third row. Hi, uh, Toshi Inaba from Kyoto News, Japanese Newswire. Thank you for this opportunity. And I would, I'd like to clarify the timeline. When did your government uh, decide this candidacy and uh, when did you file it? And could you also uh, tell us when December and when Belarus filed the candidacy? And did you, have you got any reaction from them or any uh, other member states from your uh, East European group? Um, I just had to, to remind myself that was 9th of December 2021 the, the government of Slovenia took a decision and yeah, um, cannot add much to it. The, in between we had elections in Slovenia, so we are uh, uh, even, um, but still it's a, a national project for us. But Belarus has had already filed the candidacy before you did, right? But I think it's a sovereign decision and it's, um, Oh, it's not the first time, once again, I think uh, we didn't break any rules. No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't say you broke a rule, but I wanted to clarify the timeline. Yes, uh, 9th, of October, 9th of December 2021. And what about Belarus? When did, it, when did they announce the... You didn't, 2007. I'll check, thanks. Thank okay. you. Uh, thank you, Madam Minister. Stefano Vaccara, La Voce di New York. Um, let's say that you 
your country is elected. You enter the Security Council. Um, what you're going to do in practical terms to, uh, for peace, to make, to make uh, some, some push for the Security Council to, to gain back its role. And then I also have to ask you, on the reform, you mentioned the reform. Um, do you agree there should be, uh, in, a, in eventual reform, there should be uh, more permanent members? Or you think that a reform should, should not have any permanent members or not having permanent members? <laughs> Um, in practical terms, what we plan to do, you asked me, for peace and stability, I think this is such a very, very complex question. But um, I can, in practical terms, say what we are planning to do, that the day after we'll sit together and pull all our resources to strengthen our team here, to strengthen our team in Ljubljana, and really engage immediately in the topics that are on the agenda. I mentioned before that I know that it's around 80% of topics on African issues. That is why I said, speaking with African partners, having no Africa at the table as a permanent member, it's speaking without Africa on Africa. And this is something that I think it's not right. So the reform, yes, um, we are supporting the reform. But I think now telling about the details of the reform, not the discussing, first with all the partners, how that, I know it's a long ongoing process for years. We have certain positions as a country, but I would start first listening to the others to see how best we can reform it and make it efficient. But if we are enlarging, then we should be enlarging. Um, I think equally both um, seats in head, headquarters of cat, yeah, categories. Okay. Uh, I don't see, okay, that's the last question. We also don't see any questions online, so we'll take that as the last question. Thank you. Madam Minister, good luck tomorrow. Halil Mulia from Kosovo National Television. Uh, Serbia-Kosovo dialogue. You know that part very well. You've been very much involved. And now in last weeks, we've seen that uh, what's happening in the northern part of uh, Kosovo. Uh, International community is mainly criticizing government of Kosovo, while in the other side is a peace in Serbia. That's, that's the impression of the uh, Kosovars. What can it be done? What can you do even after you come, uh, hopefully you will, uh, become a member of the Security Council? What should it be done? Yes, I follow situation in the Balkans, especially nowadays in uh, Kosovo and Serbia, very closely, because um, we are worried um, of um, recent incidents and uh, tensions and escalation of conflict. And we called on both sides to um, don't escalate further and bring the situation at the border um, to at ease. I was in touch with both sides, with the uh, um, representatives of the governments in the last days. And uh, Slovenia called upon um, both sides to engage in the dialogue. This is very important. And what is also important, the dialogue that is between Belgrade and Pristina, and not further escalate the situation, to restrain from that and try to normalize the life of citizens on both sides of the border. So this is the first message. And um, yes, we are worried about what is happening. Um, and we'll continue being engaged in resolving the issue. But will be not an easy one. OK, then thank you very much, everybody.